Let me just recap us. A dare. What about dad? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright. What a dad. What about dad? Welcome back to What About Dad? TV recap and review. I'm Adair. I'm Jen. This week on The Witching Hour, we'll be talking about Episode 5, The Other Woman. But before we get into that, we want to discuss the business of the day. Jen here. What about that? TV recap and review announced their new patron account. This is a great opportunity for the podcast to grow to new heights. We will leave a link to the Patreon account in tonight's show notes, i.e. the show descriptions. If you like, feel free to follow us on Twitter, shoot on over to iTunes, and give us a five-star rating. Maybe write a little review. A little goes a long way towards growing this cast. Thank you so much. Back to you, Adair. In other news, we'll be debuting a new series called Podfic Theater, where we'll be spotlighting fanfic from some of your favorite archive of our own authors. If you have a favorite fanfic, send it to us at whataboutdat17 at gmail.com. And we'll give it a look-see. And if you get picked, we'll get the star treatment. An audible explosion in your ears with the highest quality reading and editing. And if you're new to the cast, you can tune into us on iTunes, Spotify, Player FM, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Google Play, Podbeam, listen notes, and we even have some fun stuff going on over at YouTube. So make sure you like and subscribe. And if you're looking to hear the first pod fic, make sure to head over to any of our streams or make your way over to YouTube to get all up in that fic. Twitterisms. This week we are introducing a new section called Twitterisms. In an effort to build community, we are reaching into the fandom of Twitter and pulling tweets from across the charmed universe. This week's focus is Nico appreciation. Alan says, Shooting the sands of time, memory erasing spell took hours. Light at night, in the bedroom, on a green screen, with so many different camera angles. Melanie Diaz was present, honest, and heartbreakingly good the entire time. So lucky to have worked with her. Hashtag charmed. That's always nice. That's a precious, precious thing from a coworker. So the next one we have is uh, at Gracious Endgame. The potential with these two. Clap emoji, clap emoji, hashtag charmed. It is a meme with Harry and uh, Maisie. I like it. I'm here for it. Gracious is already graciously shipping them. I'm here for it. I really am. Hashtag lighter witch. <laughs> Hashtag lighter witch. <laughs> now, I thought this one, this one comes from Variety, the uh, media reg. Uh, it says, Hashtag charm has received a full series order. I had no idea that they didn't have a full series order start going into their run. But apparently these last six episodes have been a test run to see if they could even find an audience apparently they did <laughs> so congratulations yeah, that's exciting. congratulations charmed reboot yeah variety's like hey you can stay <laughs> and then we have a last one by ellen tory we shot trips be- uh, cabin scene over two days ago everything inside was shot at the studio and then our crew completely dismantled and dismembered and reassembled the entire cabin on location by a lake Hashtag charmed. That is dedication, I tell you that's what. The, that's why I love cruise. That's living the charm really life. So. <laughs> Indeed. Twitterisms. Jim's dramatic synopsis reading. Mal's worried about Nico's safety. He comes up with a plan to protect her. One which will require the power of three. One little two, little three, little charm ones. Macy struggles with the idea of Gavin moving on after weeks of emotional avoidance and demon slaying. Wrong number, who this? Maggie struggles with a guilty conscience from betraying her bestie for life, Kappa's sister, Lucy, by macking with her man. We were rooting for you! We were all rooting for you! A.K.A. the white dude who was casted just to break these ladies up. Pfft, typical. 
conflict of the week. Personal lives versus witch lives finally come to a full collision as each girl must face losing their loved ones, a consequence of the vigil anti lifestyle. And now it's time for Charmed the Witching Hour. All right, so let's get into this. So who would have thought Nico has a huge fishing habit? <laughs> I wouldn't have guessed, honestly. That would have been the last thing. But she's a lesbian, so I assume fishing, camping, sure. The girl is full of surprises, you know, former exes, uh, moving. I just feel like I've known this character so well. They've done a lot of developing. Now we know her intricate hobbies. <laughs> um, I actually really liked, I, I, I'm starting to like Nico, and I think it's hilarious that in this episode, you kind of lose Nico, like we're losing her in a way, but I think uh, it's smart for them to kind of restart this character so that we can get even more of angst and, uh, and awesomeness. In this episode, we have Nico really obsessing over the death of her partner, Flip. Trip? What was his name? Trip. 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 Nico and Trip. Yeah, the movie that Nico we will Trip. never get. Nico and Trip. They should be a Disney movie. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but she's been obsessing and uh, freaking out. And I think that's obvious. Like, it makes sense why she's doing that. Um, yeah, and she tells Mel that you know, now that he's gone, she can kind of open up and say that Trip had been looking into her mom's death and had found some evidence that kind of would help her realize that it wasn't a murder. I mean, we all know Mel now knows that it's not a murder, or that it wasn't just an accident, but a murder, but, you know, Nico has no idea what's going on. Yeah, Nico's undergone what you can call, say is character assassination the erasing, the erasure of her personality. You know, all that we knew in these six episodes, there may be something different. And is that... It, is there a real good reason for that? Like, do you think? I think because they wanted to tell the love story of Mel and Nico from the beginning. So we get them at their good ending to begin with. And now we are going back in time to tell their story. Does that make sense? It's Absolutely. a little, no, little Vow-esque. <laughs> no, I think it's actually, um, in that regard, I think it's a smart idea. You know, give us their happy ending, show us how they are as a couple so that we can already see what it's like, and then strip it away and have it start. Which is funny, because that's a theory that people have been having about Winona Earp with Way Hot. You know, um, what happens if, um, when Julian healed Nicole, if she lost her memories of Waverly and they had to restart the relationship, you know? And so I think it's funny that we pretty much are getting that now in this, you know? Hmm. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, I agree entirely. And I think that it is it is one of their way of saying, don't worry, as bad as it's going to get, they end up together by giving us this peek into what their, what their present situation was. I'm also really curious to see, like, what Nico because one of the things we we talked about on the last cast was that it just felt that Nico is always emotionally ready just to sacrifice for Mel like give her anything she just was so in love you know what I mean um and it felt kind of one-sided so I it's going to be interesting to see the that change or to see what it is about that relationship that makes this character kind of like throw everything else aside and go for it and I'm really curious and it's going to be really great to watch. Well, it's going to be it's really interesting because I don't even think, you know, I think it's not even going to be like a happy one at first. I think that Mel's abrasiveness is going to get on Nico's nerve now that she's not attached to her that way. And she, I think she's going to be the person to see kind of a lot of Mel's flaws um, more so than anybody else. And I think it's going to be a while before they actually even kind of like each other. Uh, she'll have probably an innate trust in Mel, but not really. You know, I think it's going to be great to, to see that. And uh, speaking of, you know, Mel, I think this was a really hard and good episode. And I think um, Melanie did a good job uh, acting this episode because that's hard, you know, letting go of uh, somebody you love, you know, for the sake of saving them or whatever. But um, she had trouble convincing Nico to drop this investigation do you think she tried hard enough or do you think that uh she did all she could to really kind of sway her from doing this or do you think the... no i feel like i wish they created this problem over the span of two episodes 
So in one episode, you'd be able to see her doing everything she can to stop this this shapeshifter from hunting down her girlfriend. And then the other episode coming to the resolution. I felt like the fact that I, maybe a two to three episode arc about this like hunter who she can't stop despite her best intentions. You know, and also the fact that she is a very new witch who doesn't know all the spells yet. And so this is a foe she can't defeat yet. So I feel like if they built that a little bit more, the emotional stakes towards the end would have felt even more grave mm -hmm. and they did it in one episode and it's like anytime you kill an episode like Winona Earp where you kill uh, dolls in one, episode two <laughs> and you're like oh or episode two or three and you're like oh I wish I had more time in this story you know or like if you just if you do something to a large kid well you can compare it Nico's personality was erased so it's it is in a form of its own kind of metaphysical assassination of her character. So it's yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna do that, I wish it had been more of an arc. But that said, I don't know where they would have put it because the six episodes they gave us were pretty tight and built the world. So, and if you didn't know what your show's fate was gonna be <laughs> up until last week, you probably you were taking a huge risk with this being the ending and upsetting the fan base. Yeah, I actually think that now it all makes sense that the show is going so quickly. You know, it's it really makes sense that they're just trying to cram everything in because they weren't sure if they were even going to get a full order, which is interesting. But I think you have to have a plan B, uh, A and a plan B as a writer. You know, you have to say, okay, the writers probably knew they had a half order, okay? They already knew they had a half right order, but they didn't know if they would be picked up for the second half. So they had to write two versions. They had to have two paths. We're going to do this, these six, and if we don't hear by this time, then maybe episode six is different. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so maybe mm -hmm. episode six, they had two versions of it. One that can continue the story and then one that ends the story, you know? Mm -hmm. And they heard that, great, we have episode six. We're getting picked up. Great, great, great. Now we can go with plan B as a plan to our plan A, you know, or vice versa. Right, right. We can continue with this mm -hmm. hook into this relationship, which is what it felt like, right? It felt like a six-episode little mini relationship, and now we're hooked into them, and we want to know what happens to Nico and her memories. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. I think that uh, Mel in this, you know, she did... You are so correct, because I we talked about this off the cast, and, you know, Jen wasn't convinced it was the best way to kind of get rid of her mem memories, or, you know, there should have been more you know, Macy involvement as far as like telling her to figure it out. And we had this whole thing. And now what, what you just said, I think that actually makes more sense of that thought process because if it would have been a two art situation, you have the first episode. Yes. Yeah, she's getting hunted. These it's getting worse. It's visibly getting worse. And that's when towards the end of the episode, you start going, Oh, maybe I should do a spell. Maybe I should find a spell to erase her and then like you see that back and forth and that's mm -hmm. when macy would have talked to her and had that moment like are you sure no don't get so hot-headed and be quit with this or whatever and then you would have that whole episode and then the next episode you would have had the beginning of it her doubting her decision her choice not really sure and then her going no this is the only way to save her life because i'm trying all these things and it's just getting worse and she's in danger and then making that decision i i love the way you just arc the show <laughs> um, and can I just tell you, as you're thinking about how you would arc the show, I'm thinking about this episode and how, now that I think about it, it should absolutely live in the span of three, a mini, a th mini three episode arc. And so, because in this episode, you just had too much going on. You had Alistair Crawley or Alistair, the big bad reveal himself, the yep. big bad reveal, the season big bad reveal. And then you had, um... It started off as an episode that started with Macy. She was our first look on this episode, mm -hmm. right? She's in the bathtub. So the, what I got as a viewer is, oh, we are now entering Macy's POV. One of the things you talked about was how you wanted to see a more evenly distributed uh, storyline A, B, and C. So then M Macy's supposed to live in the A because we see her first. And we see her a storyline and we see her, her problem is set up first between her and Gavin. But halfway through the episode, Mal's storyline, which has lived in A, they tried to bring it back into B. And then it kind of in the fourth act becomes A again with her, the disappearance of Nico. 
And because we're so invested in Nico and Mal's love story that it feels like Macy was kind of robbed of the POV because what's happening with her is not unimportant. It's just like Nico losing all of her history versus Gavin maybe has a tattoo on his side and we're, we're, we're alluding to a larger thing with Macy, but we're closing up Mel and Nico. So it felt like the switch of perspective going from Macy, being an episode about Macy, into really just being an episode that finishes off the storyline between her, Nico and Mel. It was a Macy And then suddenly episode. you have this giant freaking, wait, bad guy being introduced. That's a lot of episode if you take it apart, the pieces. Yeah, well, it was a, it was a Mel-Nico episode disguised as a Macy episode. You know, Kind like, of like the last episode of Supergirl yeah. was <laughs> a James-centric episode. <laughs> Covered by a garden party, yeah. So, like, <laughs> this is kind of They try to be polite about it. Yeah, and this is what's really interesting. It's like, I, I said this before, and you're right. I like Mel. She's whatever. I mean, I'm annoyed by Mel. But I feel like it's very unbalanced right now. Like, she's just the main character. And everybody else is kind of a backup to her and her story. And she's infuriating to me and frustrating. And I want to see what the other witches have to do. They could have gone further in setting up Alistair and Macy's relationship. They made it very quick. Oh, she's someone, he, uh, she looks up to him and he's important in the tech world or whatever. Um, you know, we got a little bit of, oh, he is, you know, playing off of the deaths of these witches, but he didn't cause the death, but he's kind of like an opportunist. And, you know, that kind of feeling. And it's like, okay, I, I was interested in what's going on there. I understand you have to um, kind of bring in Nico because you need that like I said that Daryl police officer who helps them get out of sticky situations without being so biased so you need to make that happen quickly and I get that but like it just kind of once again this week was all about Nico and Mel and Mel and her whatever I feel know. like Mel is Winona Earp with with her own, with Nico being like officer hot she's like a mix of both having she's like she's got a mix of both in her and i enjoy mal contrary to your thoughts on her i really think she's the driving force of the show so far well that's what i'm maybe saying it's because melanie diaz had like you know maybe because she was the name they brought to the show because she, she had a body of work prior to this I, i've seen this actress a lot i don't i don't know where precise exactly but i know she's done a lot of work so she was like kind of like the face they brought in from over from another show in the capacity that in Riverdale you have the Jughead who's done some work too. So um, the Jughead, yeah, cool stuff. Uh, yeah, you, I, I, yeah, you had, he has, he, he did the Sweet Life. Um, but like, I know Melanie did, did some other stuff. I have to Google. I'm going yeah, to. Yeah, but even though cast. you have somebody in the in the role doing something like, you know, being a, a lead or whatever, she's not the lead of the show. It's three leads, and they're unfortunately making it a lead and two side like co-leads you know what i'm saying if you do a calf season a half order of six episodes you know and you bring in like a name somebody who like is recognizable to like maybe a younger generation of people watching television maybe from the disney world or nick world some somebody who's done something like that you know to to kind of give it that extra uh, momentum into getting a full season you know and then the other two girls they were they they'd never booked a large show so i feel like it kind of does remind me of the original charms when the original charm started you had prue being shannon doherty from who was hot off of 90210 which i watched so much i watched the shit out of that and she was kind of the face of season one so she got killed mm -hmm. no predictions mm -hmm. <laughs> you know but like the first half of the episodes were always um the first half of the the first half of the season was very Prue centric until we broke into who Piper was. We actually didn't even explore Piper until maybe two, season two or three as like being the lead. Yeah, and I think that's fine that they're they're kind of doing that now that they have that order. But if they wouldn't have gotten it, I'd been like, really, I didn't get to learn about the other people that were right. to me more interesting at the moment. Because like, fine, just Mel's just angsty, and I'm like, that's great to a point. And then I'm like, See, I okay. love her angst. I, I, no, no, I, I, I love her great. angst. I just need to. There's no character development if all you are is angsty. If that's your entire point of your character, I'm over it. Like I need more than that to go off. I of. think what you're saying is that you feel that she's playing a victim too much, like almost like 
it's my fault. Well, she's I just like a guilt. teenager where it's just like, it's my fault. I'm angry. I have all these emotional, like, mm, and I'm like, fine. I get it. We all, we've all been there. But like with Mel, to be the lead and to only have all that angst, it's like, you're not really showing leadership. You're also not really showing like the best kind of sisterhood, but you're also being like prideful. Like, I like the fact that she's flawed, but because she's so flawed, there's no reason for me to like her. You know, I there are people who could be flawed, but then there's something, Bobo Del Rey, flawed, but there's something that makes you like him and kind of want to root for him. You know, but Mel, to me, doesn't have that. I'm like, okay, sure, you're a victim, bad things happen to you, okay, what else do you have to bring to the table? Like, what else are you giving me? What else are you showing me in this magical world that you, what makes you, besides birthright, be a power, or, you know, on your journey to be a powerful witch. Like, I can see how Macy could be a powerful witch, or whatever she is, because I have thoughts on that. I can see how Maggie can be, bring more to the table than just her whippy, you know, pedestrian kind of life that she brings to the charm side. I can see that. But Melanie, or Mel, I just I see, like... I feel the complete opposite. She brings all the Mel drama. Is, I think she's a great character. I just... Like, when I watch the show, I enjoy her stuff more than any of the other two girls. But I but think that's also because they don't show other the other girls' no, stuff. No, it's true. They know? show the other girls' stuff. But the other girls' stuff, to me, we haven't spent long enough to really know them. I enjoy Maggie a lot because she's so, like... I feel like of the three, she's, like, the least... Um, she's the most carefree. That's the most carefree nature about her. Yes. And she's fun. She's fun. You know, like, she kind of gets the funny storylines. And I feel like I enjoy Mel because I feel like she's very action driven. There are points where I have to like, where I draw the line absolutely is when she gets Angela Wu and puts her in the trunk with Maggie of her car. I just want to know the scene beforehand of her and Maggie wrangling Angela Wu up. How the hell they actually manage that feat of getting her in the car. <laughs> I want to see the B instead of the C with that. Um, but I feel like with her, I like, I enjoy seeing how she's so action-based, and I do like the way she, uh, I definitely like that she's the advocate and not always one to go with the flow of the world itself. But to me, she questions why we're doing things like the TV trope says we should do them. She's that character who's always, like, questioning the flow uh, that the TV, the constructions of TV, the tell us that we should accept and go with. And maybe it's jarring, but I actually really like it, and I find it so refreshing. And so, like, there are times where she just has this self-realization, self-awareness. It's almost as if you had this character pull over to the side and give a little solilo soliloquy to the audience, where she just, within the span of being the character, the writing really does this. It's not Mal. And they give this mouthpiece to Mal, where she'll say, say something that's actually really self-realized, and I feel like that to me is the writers telling us through Mel or sometimes through Maggie as well or sometimes through Macy that that they have that they're working against these they're working against a larger flow of tropes to break some of the things that we're used to seeing presented to us in the span of this teen drama. Yeah. So I mean I get I it. Just, and I think that I just I think I think that I appreciate her writing quite a bit. Mm. I love some of her dialogue. I think she has the best dialogue. Mel has a lot going for her because the writers are writing a ton for her. And I just wish that they would bring that amount of material to the others because right now it just feels like the Mel show. Like every week we start with Mel, it's all like all the heavy stuff is with her. Um, and fine, if we're gonna just set up one character each season, you're hoping that you get three seasons. You know, you barely even knew if you had a full season. So, because it's already so imbalanced, I'm just like, I want to know more about the other girls. Like, Macy, this episode kind of had a little bit of humor, but also a giant seed for what she is, who she is, who Gavin is, you know? And that is more charm to me. Yeah, there's a guy trying to kill you. When isn't there going to be a guy trying to kill the charm ones, you know? So for me, finding out why Gavin, seemingly innocent Gavin, has this hell beast... Oh, it's actually not a healthy sign, but has a sign on him that only Macy can see. You know, is that a soulmate thing? Is that a deity thing? 
uh, somebody looked up and said uh, the mark on his body was about some kind of god symbol. Um, so maybe Gavin's half god. Like, what's the connection with Macy? Why? Why do we need to pay attention to this? And why is it being so subtly seen as opposed to just like more over the head, like Mel's journey is? You know. Um, I and she tried to do like humor. Like they tried to do humor, but like, is Macy the humor one? Is it gonna be Maggie? Like, we've seen angsty Mel. Now, what are the other two's kind of defining characteristics? You know what I'm saying? You can't just have a scientist and the... You, you have the advocate who's angsty. You have the scientist who's what? She's the funny one, the quirky one. It's What's like her the thing? Power Rangers route. Mel is the Red Ranger. Billy is Macy. And Maggie's the Pink Ranger. That is how they set those tropes up, literally. <laughs> yeah, they really did. That's pretty much... And you know accurate. what? Just to make you feel better... Billy stayed on the show longer than any Power Ranger other than Tommy. Just David Yost, give a, give a shout out to David Yost. Actually, he produced... Um, and Jason made porn. Um, Desperate Housewives. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay, so yeah, that I, I just feel like, once again, because Gavin, I know Nico so much and I'm so worried about her memory, and I feel like I don't know Gavin as much at all, if any. He just seems like a nice guy, you know? And I, the moment... <laughs> they brought in we're talking about macy now right okay yeah. the moment they brought in like macy's jealousy storyline where there or macy discovers that gavin oh that scene where macy's in her lab and there's the new alistair baddie being introduced and macy's friend is like oh gavin he was out at having a sex party and i was like what <laughs> what am i watching and he, he was like he was like he was having he's 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 coming in late today because of a sex party he was having yeah and, like, what and, a dick. And, and then gavin comes in he's all like tired from a night of hard alcohol and banging and he's got like he's got like a detective coat on or something i knew from that moment on that he was charmed bedazzled clearly something was wrong with this character because gavin just does not scream playa to me i actually don't think he's he's um charmed I think he's tired because I even said this before in the other um, cast. I said, "How long is Gavin going to stick around?" They made it very clear, and even framing of the last scene of the last episode with him that he was going to move on. And I think this is him rebelling, like n as as a nerd and a, like I said, a late bloomer and someone who was much like Macy in that regard. There have been like times where I'll go kind of all the way to the other side. Um, of where I'm used to being because I'm just tired and I'm like, you know, trying to shake it up. And I think maybe Gavin with this girl, she's beautiful. She said, yes, she wants to be around him all the time. He's getting exactly what he wanted from Macy of like being liked and adored in that moment. I don't think he's charmed necessarily. We find out he's some kind of being or like some, he's important. And I think Macy's realizing he's important um, and everything's kind of like destiny filled, but I think that we're going to get more um, explanation as to why he all of a sudden moved on so quickly. And she, she even asked him, oh, so you could kind of move on quickly, right? And he was like, oh, because you're, I've been asking for months, you know? It's like, and you keep ditching me and saying no, so why would I wait around for that? You know, and I, he's absolutely right. I you know? feel like I'm fine with Gavin moving on. If anything, I've never really been that into Gavin. But he's too perfect. Um, but I sincerely enjoyed the chemistry. And it was like a nerdy, sweet chemistry between Macy and Harry. Oh, my God. I was like, I didn't want, know I wanted it till it happened. And I was like, you know what it is? They're both got like these. Macy has like a really kind heart and an innocence about her, as does Harry. But like he's way old, kind of like Edward and Bella. And I just started going there. I enjoyed it. Well, I mean, technically, Leo from the original was just as old. Like, right. You know, and then he still ended up having a family and also the BS. I but, loved um, it. And I, I just thought their personalities. I was like, oh, actually, these two. I would I would enjoy a lot more Macy Harry time where maybe she's working on a spell. He's collabing. They have some ideas. It gets cute. I enjoy it. You know, it would be funny, uh, and this could be, kind of fall into prediction territory, but um, just in general, I'm going to say it. What if 
Macy being probably half something. She's, let's be honest, she's not just a witch. She's a witch plus something else. Um, or, like, maybe she is, like, some kind of old somebody from Harry's old life. You know? And maybe the person Harry was in love with or whatever reminded or looked like Macy, you know? I think that'd be kind of interesting where that's why she was ushered away and maybe that's why he doesn't have memories. That'd be kind of a cute way to bring the that meat cute for, um, mm. you know, the... Yeah, I'm down for it. I like lighter. it. A witch lighter, lighter witch, whichever you want to say, mm. it sounds good. It rolls off the tongue. I don't even right, have any, anything for uh, Gavin and Macy. Speaking of um, Harry, let's talk about... Wardrobe of the Week. We didn't really have a bunch of things to talk about on this wardrobe of the week because it was pretty um, docile in the clothing department. They don't really have their looks yet. I mean, they kind of do, but like not. Um, actually, I have two things to mention. Harry's boxers. I appreciate <laughs> just that comedy beat of Harry and then he like saunters it, like kind of like runs in because he doesn't orb in because he's already in the house in his boxers. And he's like, what? I, I'm, you know, I just, I don't know. I always like that kind of silliness. And then, um, even though it's not a wardrobe, it's more of a makeup thing, I love Lucy's, like, dripping eyeliner when she's crying to Maggie. Because how embarrassing. She goes, I'm an ugly crier, <laughs> you know? And I like that she's honest enough to admit that. <laughs> and that's the wardrobe of the week. Yes. Um, if, if we want to blow right into Maggie real quick. Mm -hmm. The conflict was rather direct. She is the harbinger of her own grief. She kissed her friend's boyfriend, Parker, as she shouldn't. And now she's no longer a kappa witch. Kappa witch. Sorry. Um, and I feel like it was pretty direct. And one of the things that is endearing about Maggie is the fact that she, like, rather than dealing with her own problems... You know, decides to help out Macy. She's a she's an emotional avoider, and I enjoyed it. But it also just kind of felt like it felt like Maggie got exactly what Maggie deserved in this episode. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I I do give props for Maggie telling her the truth, and they yeah. I do give props for the writers not dragging that out because that's you know going against the Bechdel test all day every day. <laughs> you know, so I'm glad that you just kind of figured it out i'm i'm glad that parker didn't break up like he likes maggie but i'm glad he broke up more for himself than just to be with maggie and try and get her to cheat with him or something mm -hmm. yeah you know, i'm glad he was just like it wasn't working because that in itself was refreshing you know like the notion that he didn't break up with the other girl to be with the other girl because they kissed and now they're in love he broke up because he felt like it just they were apples and oranges. Yeah, I, I, yeah. And I still don't like Parker. I really don't like Parker. I don't either. And I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I just don't like I, that trope of like, oh, I have this instant connection with somebody else's person, and there's gonna be an issue now. We gotta figure Super out our territory feelings. territory right there, right? Yeah. I don't know. I just like it doesn't feel. I'm, I'm just kind of over it. It's like, yeah, I do respect the fact that he broke up with the girl, but it was too quick. Like you saw each other. You kissed once, and now all of a sudden, this kid, you know, it's like, I don't know. I just feel like they didn't even establish him enough as a boyfriend to Lucy to yeah. even make us care that he was kissing Maggie. Yeah. They're just like, here's an obstacle, let me not establish it. And then, you know what that does to your audience? It just makes you not care at all. Yeah. Um, I also like the fact that, well, I mean, I liked and kind of didn't like, whatever, um, Macy's journey was to kind of help there to help Maggie figure out that she had to be honest because seeing Macy talk to Gavin she realized oh my god Macy's jealous you know it's not just a succubus maybe it's not a succubus maybe it's just you are avoiding the fact that you're jealous you know maybe I need to stop avoiding the fact that I did feel something in that kiss and that it was way more intense than I wanted it to be. And I should just face that fact, you know, and be honest with yourself in that moment. So, like, I get it, but I don't know. I was underwhelmed with Maggie's story because it really was just, like, 
trope after trope after trope. trope. And even though they tried to not over trope it, it was by giving trope. him a little agency, it still was trope. I tripped over all of my tropes. It was just <laughs> And then I threw up a bucket of tropes. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this episode and like the ending of it, because then we get the whole come home now, uh, we need you, and they do that, and and Mel's been once again because this is pretty much a story about Mel and Nico this entire uh, episode. You know, she's been battling back and forth trying to figure out what to do, what to do, and she decides to do the spell to erase um, the relationship, and Harry says, you know, if you do this, there's going to be some unforeseen consequences. And I really find that interesting, and I like that that idea, because, you know, we don't realize the effect we have on other people's lives. Whether it be big or small, you know, uh, we find out towards the end that Mel doesn't have her job because Nico was the one who woke her up so that she didn't miss her interview. You know, it's small things like that that we don't realize. You know, picking somebody up, giving somebody a lift, or just sending a quick text, or even, you know, when it's on our minds, calling somebody because it might spark something in them. You know, I love that ripple effect, that idea that even something small we do could be a huge life changer, un, you know, unforeseen in somebody's life. Um, but I like the fact that the sisters came in. They looked worried. And it wasn't, a, Jen and I kind of talked about this. It wasn't a, for me, it wasn't about, in that moment, is this the right thing or the wrong thing to do? After thinking about it, I really like the fact that it was an emotional support. This is the first time we saw the sisters make an emotional, like 100% just based on emotion. Not what's going to happen later. Not if they should. Not is it the spell or magic related. It was their sister is, it's almost like a life support scenario. Should I take them off life support? The person I love, the love of my life. And... They were just there for Mel to make that decision, you know. And at the end of the day, she, with the, being a person who likes to carry the weight of the world, made the decision to erase her relationship, the person she absolutely loves. Uh, and I thought that was interesting. At first, I was thinking, oh, it's a choice, and we're making this choice. And Jen also had this, like, well, maybe she should have been, people should have stopped or tried to tell her to stop or decide something else. But yeah, after thinking about it, I was like, oh, wow, they were just there emotionally. That was the first time we got to see not witches, not whatever, just full sisters going, we don't know how to fix this. We don't know how to make it easier. Harry couldn't say anything. He's like, I don't know what to do for you, except be here for you while you choose to do this. Also, I really like the fact that Mel did her first part of the spell, and it was up to the sisters to finish the spell. And I thought that was kind of powerful, too. I that. would have loved to have seen the choice that Mal does that. And, you know, makes this choice to um, erase the spell and does her part of the spell. Then I would have loved to have seen, like, her go to be with Nico in her last moments. And the sisters, they do a spell, but it's not the spell Mal thinks they're doing. <laughs> and so, like, it's a different spell and that does something different. But, yeah kind of has the same kind of effect so uh, that would have been kind of fun and mel finds out later in life anyways i you know i would actually also i wish that they would have because they brought it up in the other episode of mel telling nico that she's a witch i think that their final kind of goodbye should have been her telling her i think it should have been like um she's like i gotta do this and I just wanted her to be like, Nico, you can't. I'm a witch. Yes, honest to God witch. Maybe show her, maybe if she, Nico goes to drop a pen or something and she freezes it, just the pen, and Nico sees it. And as Nico sees it, that's when the memories start falling around them. And she's like, no, not yet, not yet. She goes, I'm a witch. And so that's why you were in the hospital. Something's trying to kill you. Like, tell her the whole truth as fast as she can. And right before she gets to Nico going, now it all makes sense or I understand that's the last memory, and then she's gone. And then she, you know, pulls an Infinity War and turns into dust. <laughs> I feel yeah. like I wish that I that Mel would have lost her memories of Nico as well. I just feel like it's, it feels like, you know, there is a consequence. It creates a ripple effect in, in their storyline, but 
it would have been to me a more interesting choice if they both just lost their history so then the only the keepers of that history are like macy and maggie and that is a heavier burden to carry and that would bring macy and maggie into that storyline of a a little bit more they know this heavy secret about their sister and their sister has no memories of it and they're just keeping it for her for her from her forever yeah or so. at least until it's a uh, time that needs to happen like yeah, maybe until it's safe yeah Keep maybe it safe for me you know or maybe even like macy uh, okay so we're kind of getting into predictions here a little bit um talking about it before we get into all that because we can talk about this for a while um your thoughts on the villains we had the um we had alistair and his shapeshifter minion what did you kind of think about all that situation? underwhelming and terrible Yep, predictable, obvious. He his even his facial hair made him look like well. I know and his name is bad. Alistair, which is just ridiculous. I'm like, come on, kids. Um, the DNA, I thought it was that was kind of interesting. They are opportunists. Like I said, they were not involved in killing the witches. They just wanted to collect the DNA from the witches who were already dead. They just figured that'd be easier, which is kind of smart. And then now they're gonna deal with Macy and you know, my thing is, did he know she was a charm one to begin with? Was there something that tipped her off? Because all of a sudden he's like, I know how to get the charm ones. And I'm like, well, when did we learn that you knew she was a charm one? I don't know. That was a little bizarre for me. Um, a little detached, if you will. Um, yeah. And what's the point? Is Charity going to come back and realize that this guy screwed her over? Why didn't we get any information on how she could be manipulated? It's a whole thing. Is Charity um, even alive? That's my question. Is no, she, she's alive. She, she, yeah, she but like, what happened? Up? Was she, yeah, how, well, how did they bedazzle her? So that's my question. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't know. That's kind of uh, bizarre. Um, yeah, so let's get to these questions for you guys out there in the audience listening at home. Um, let's see. I, I believe it, but is Gavin a spiritual entity or affected by one? What is he? Is he fully human? Is he um, kind of like a Kinsey from Lost Girls type thing where he just I think just he has claimed. a parasite in his hip, in his kidney. That's glowing. Just throwing it out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, what besides Mel losing her job will the fallout um, of erasing the relationship? Like, what will the... What do you think the other things are going to be? Like, yeah, she lost her job. Okay. Is Harry still the leader of women's studies? Is, you know, this altered path now going to be a hot mess? I don't know. What do you guys think out there? She's going to uh, have to become a barista because she has no job. Right. Um, will Lucy's BF be a plant? Is Parker, Lucy's ex, a red herring? Is he a mole? Is he a demon said to break up their friendship? Sure. Well, who knows? Well, I have my thoughts. <laughs> um, how can Maggie make it right with Lucy? Do you know? I don't know. I mean, I doubt it's going to ever happen unless you can... I don't know. I like this relationship. Like we said, the pedestrian world. So I don't know how Maggie's going to fix it. If I was dating Parker and you kissed Parker. What could I forgive you? Ah. It would take a lot of ice cream sandwiches. <laughs> All right. Um, My face, I'm like. <laughs> uh, why did Macy allow Mel to use the powerful forgetful spell if she herself has been the recipient of a similar magic, i.e. her mother choosing to forget pain? This is just one for you to all think about. Walk around your day. Think about it. All right. Yeah. Because we talked about that. We talked about a lot of the cast. Um, just that idea of Macy was the the recipient. She's like the Nico in the situation where somebody chose to do a spell so that... The personality wasn't erased, but somebody emotionally erased her. Which I think is kind of worse. Eh, I don't know. You can't miss what you don't remember or you don't feel... But oh, I don't that's know. even sad. So, that, is, that is sadder. It's there. super sad. But what do you guys <laughs> think out there? Like, what are your thoughts on that? Should Macy have, like, really kind of told Mel, hey, don't do this. It's going to, you know, screw us all up and, you know, look at me or whatever. I don't know. Let us know in the comment sections uh, near you. What about those predictions? Yes. Um, It's a lot. I have a lot of things. I have a lot of feelings. Oh, okay. I, feelings. Um, I got one right here. Yeah, what do you got? This one's for Nico. What? what we know so far. Before meeting Mel, Nico was engaged and lived in, a sm lived in a small town called Hilton. She moved to be with Nico. My prediction is the Charmed Ones will chase a demon to Hilltown and meet Nico on the verge of getting married to 
said ex fiance. It was referenced. That was a pin drop. We're going to meet this person. Um, yep. Mel will have to make another hard choice because she has memories of who Nico is. And M Nico may or may not end up just following Mel again and history will repeat itself. Because I've seen some really fucking tropey things coming out of Maggie's storyline, I predict that Nico will, some other reason, will bring Nico into town. Into Mel's life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I absolutely think that that's going to happen. Um, I think that Nico would become the cop in her city without a bias for the charm ones. I think because she was in love with Mel, she had a soft spot. That's why her partner, uh, Trip, was able to see something was going on. And Nico's like, no, it's all good. Now that she doesn't have that, I think that she's going to be more of a hard ass and a little bit more difficult. And then it's going to get to the point where they're going to have to reveal the whole situation. And that's when she'll become the new Daryl and understanding. And, you know, on the side of the charm ones. Or maybe even the idea of Ooh, you know what I think might happen? I think this would be kind of cool. I think that Nico will be told that we erased our relationship. Um, all these things happen. I think that's going to happen. And instead of Nico going, oh my God, let's see if we still have a connection. I think she's going to be happy with the life she has and is not going to pursue dating Mel. At least not this season or not next season. And she'll be friendly with them. She'll enjoy them. It'll be a now a slow burn back to... The romance that they had because they completely restarted it you know and i think that's going to be really interesting they might be friends or co-workers to friends to a relationship and so we'll see that again um and this might give us some great acting i also think gavin is a demon god possible thing i think mel's a <laughs> i mean mel i think macy's a demon god possibly who you know poor maggie i don't know what her deal is she'll something will happen <laughs> Her storyline is just, like, really taking us nowhere in terms of having to be worried for her innate safety. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And um, as far as the villain and the harbinger and all that stuff, who knows, guys? I, I don't know what Alistair wants. I kind of don't care. Um, I would like to see, a, like, a flashback episode in the past where the girls have to go back into the past to Harry's time and meet him as a human. Yeah, get some help. You know we need mean? your help. Are you the only one? And he's like, who are you? <laughs> and I'd like to see him like a World War II episode. Mm -hmm. You know, him like he's like in the Great War, World War II, one of the wars. And, and, and they're like, it's like a 1940s theme episode, but they have charm. Well, it'd be cool to see yes. how he became a white lighter. Yes, but I want it to happen in the 1940s. Well, whatever. So I, don't, I don't know, but they did um, mention that he died, whatever he did, it was brave enough and amazing enough to become a white lighter. So I think that the fact that they even kind of really mentioned that and once again put a pin in it, I think might... He metaphorically, uh, what's it called, jumped on a bomb. Or yeah, jumped on the grenade. Or spiritual warfare. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, those are our kind of uh, random predictions and things that are thoughts that uh, going forward with the show. I think now it's starting to pick up. I'm enjoying it. I I said, you know, if you can get past your only love for the old show, that you guys can really enjoy this one. And I think people are starting to see that. Um, I actually think because I love the old show and I did watch it quite a bit, like after school every day, that watching this show has been really nice. You know, like, I love seeing the play off of the new versus the old. You know, much more than thinking, oh, the old one's way better. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, well, guys, let us know what the deal is in the comments sections and uh, make sure to follow us on Twitter and all that good stuff. We will talk to you guys again soon. Have a good one. Thanks for listening. And if you want to take us on the go, we are now available on Podbeam, Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio, and YouTube. And if you want to slide on over to Twitter, make sure you find us at whatabout_dat. Hope to see you soon.